In this video, you're going to learn about the order of operations. A mathematical expression is a combination of numbers and operations. We can simplify and solve mathematical expressions by using the order of operations. Now this little hopscotch box looking thing is going to be really helpful in uh, helping us figure out how to solve these order of ops problems because there is a specific order we go in every single time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve anything inside the parentheses and the brackets very, very first thing, okay? So we put a P in this first box for parentheses and brackets. And we can go ahead, if you're like me, I'm real visual. So drawing those symbols in there is going to help me go, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for first. Next, we solve all the exponents. So I want to put a little E in there for exponent, and then I might just put an example of what an exponent looks like. That way I know, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for in this step. Next come multiplication and division. And we're actually going to be looking for those two things at the same time. They're almost like Twinkies. They're going to be in a package together. Okay, and whichever one I see first is the one I'm going to eat first. So in the math problem, whichever one I see first is the one I'm going to solve first from left to right. So we're always multiplying and dividing in order from left to right. And of course, I can draw my little symbols to help me remember what I'm looking for. And finally, we're going to solve the addition and subtraction. And just like with the multiplication and division, I'm looking for both of them at the same time. And I'm going to add and subtract in order from left to right. So if there's a subtraction symbol before an addition symbol in the problem, that means I'm going to subtract first. So now I've got this all filled out. It's colorful, it's pretty, it's got symbols and letters, and that's going to help me remember what to do when I get to the actual problems. A few helpful hints and reminders. Now this one is pretty important because there's a star next to it. One thing that is super important to remember is that when we are solving something inside the parentheses and the brackets, if there are multiple symbols, multiple operations, then we need to follow the order of operations inside the parentheses and the brackets as well. Always, always, always. And then down here we have different ways of seeing multiplication and different ways of seeing division just as a friendly reminder. Let's go ahead and try this out. So we have 7 plus 48 divided by 2 cubed, or 2 to the third power. And you look at that and you go, what do I do first? I don't even know. So before we try solving anything, the best thing to do is to write our little PEMDAS thing. P-E-M-D-A-S, kind of still in that hopscotch form, off to the side. And then we're going to refer back to that again and again as we go through the problem. So I'm looking for parentheses and brackets first because that's what the P stands for and I don't see any of those in my problem so I can go ahead and cross off the P. I don't have to worry about parentheses and brackets in this specific problem. That means I can move on to looking for E exponents and as I look at this problem I do see an exponent right here 2 to the third power. So that's what I'm going to solve first. Well, 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2. And so if you recall, we're just going to take this one step at a time. 2 times 2 is 4. And then 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 to the third power equals 8. So we're going to put that right there. But we cannot forget the 7 plus 48 divided by because we haven't touched those yet. So we need to bring them down to this line so we know what to do next. So as I look at this line, I'm going to see, are there any more exponents? No, there are not. So I can cross off the E. And now I'm going to look for both multiplication and division. And remember, we're always looking for those at the same time. And we're going to do them in order from left to right. So I don't see any multiplication. I'll go ahead and cross that off. But I do see a division problem right here. 48 divided by 8. So that's what I'm going to solve first. 
And I know that 48 divided by 8 is 6, but that's not the answer to the problem because we still have that 7 plus at the front. So we have to bring that down to this line because we haven't used it yet. And now I'm going to look at this line in my problem and I'm going to say, okay, is there any more multiplication or division? If there's not, which in this case there is not, then I'm going to cross off the D for division and the M for multiplication if I haven't done that already. And I'm going to move on and look for addition and subtraction. So I only see one symbol here and it's a plus sign. That means that's the only thing left to do. So there's no subtraction, just addition, and 7 plus 6 is 13. So we've checked all our steps, we've made sure we went in the correct order, and our answer here is 13. Now this problem is pretty interesting because as I look at it, I can see I have a set of brackets and a set of parentheses. And if you recall, inside parentheses and brackets, we always follow the order of operations, but then we have to do it outside of them too. So what I would suggest to you is doing something like this. I've written my PEMDAS in the hopscotch form um, for both inside and outside the parentheses and the brackets. This is going to help me not forget any steps. So first, let's look at what is going on inside the parentheses and the brackets because in PEMDAS, that's what always comes first anyways. So if I'm looking inside the set of brackets, I see that there's a set of parentheses, and inside those parentheses, there's an exponent. So I'm going to solve what's inside the parentheses first, okay, and I'm going to do the exponents before I do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and write 100 minus 10, and then 2 squared means 2 times 2, so that's 4, and then I have plus 3, and I'll close out my parentheses and brackets and write everything else. So I've only solved one thing so far. So I'm inside the big set of brackets. I have solved what is inside the parentheses inside the brackets. Now I'm still inside the parentheses. They're not gone. So the only operation left inside the parentheses is to add 4 plus 3, which is 7. So I'm going to do 100 minus 10 and then I have seven inside parentheses and I'll close the bracket and finish it off with plus four. So as I'm looking here, I see in this third line that there's no longer any operation inside of the parentheses, but I do have the 10 right next to the seven in the parentheses with nothing in between. And that is, if you look over here, one of the ways that we write out multiplication. So that means 10 times 7. So I have solved everything inside the parentheses. There are no more exponents. Now I'm looking for multiplication and division. And within that set of brackets, like I said, the 10 right next to the 7 in parentheses means to multiply. So that's what we will do next. So I have 100 minus whatever 10 times 7 is. We know that 70, and then we have plus 4. So I look inside my brackets. I don't see any more multiplication, and there is no division, so I can cross those off. And now I'm looking for addition and subtraction inside the bracket. And I see subtraction, so I'm going to do 100 minus 70, which is 30, and then we have plus 4 at the very end. So I have done everything inside the brackets. I have crossed off all my PEMDAS letters for inside. Now I'm just going to look at outside because there are no more brackets. Do I have any more parentheses to solve? No. Are there any exponents I can solve? No. Is there any multiplication or division I can solve? No. No. Is there any addition or subtraction left? Yes, there is addition. So I'm going to do 30 plus 4, which is 34. And there's nothing left. So that's how we solved that one. This problem also looks a little bit different. So in order to solve this problem, I'm going to suggest you do this. Go ahead and write your PEMDAS letters 
one set for the top and one set for the bottom of this problem. That way we're not getting confused about what we've done and what we still need to do. So let's just do the top part of this problem first. Okay, so we have 2 squared times 7 plus 14. I don't see any parentheses so I can cross off the P, but I do see 2 to the second power or 2 squared, so I'm going to do that first. And 2 times 2 is 4, so now we have 4 times 7 plus 14 left on the top. And even though I'm not solving the bottom yet, I'm still going to write it because it is part of the problem and I don't want to forget it later. But right now we're only looking at the top for solving and so I'm going to check, are there any more exponents? No, so I'm going to cross that off. I'll look for multiplication and division. I see multiplication, 4 times 7. So I'm going to do that first. 4 times 7 is 28. And then I'm going to write plus 14. So everything I haven't done yet gets moved on to the next step because it needs to be done eventually. So on the top, I'm going to check and see, hey, is there any more multiplication or division? Nope. So I can cross those off. Now just look for addition and subtraction. Well, all there is is addition, 28 plus 14, and that's 42. So we have 42 over 5 plus 2, and on the top we're done. Now we're going to look at the bottom. Are there any parentheses? No. Any exponents? No. Multiplication or division? Still no. And then addition or subtraction? Hey, yes, we do have addition. So we're going to do 5 plus 2, which is 7. So now we have 42 over 7, and this needs to be simplified. There's no more operations on the top or the bottom, but we need to simplify this. And if you look up in your little uh, box in the corner, we see that fractions can also mean division. So this can mean 42 divided by 7. How many times does 7 go into 42? Well, that's easy. It's 6. So our answer here is 6. For this problem, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and try to solve it on your own, but we are going to check. So I want you to pause the video, solve the problem on your own, and then press play to check when you're confident in your answer. Alrighty, so the answer to this problem is 29. If you are not sure how I got this, I want you to look over what I did in each step, so each line of the problem, and see if you can find your mistake. If you look and you still have no idea where it went wrong, we'll talk about it in class tomorrow. On this final problem, I would like for you to do this completely on your own. So read the problem carefully and then give it your best shot. Remember, it's okay if you get it wrong, it's your first time, but there is no excuse for not trying. So at least give it a shot. If you get it wrong, we'll correct it in class tomorrow, no problem. So do this one on your own, and then of course remember that that section at the bottom you either need to do a question of confusion or a question or a problem for your group to solve. So make sure you do that, and good luck!